Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, doing the ECMDF 30 day uh, look ahead forecast for today's second video. So as I was on a Tuesday, we're having a look at the weather for the next four weeks uh, for Europe, and I shall get on a few uh, very short. It's actually a six weeks forecast, really, because you can extend out to weeks five and six. Um, but uh, but it's like like always traditionally been a 30 day forecast, but I'll show you weeks five and six days as well. Um, so I'll get on that for you in a moment, just say that the uh, third video coming up today will be the 10 to 14 day map, we include all our regular features, and uh, you'll see that later on this afternoon. Um, please like, share, subscribe uh, on videos, thank you so much, everybody, and drop a comment, let us know what you think. Thank you so much to ecmdo.int for supplying us uh, with the charts, as always. Right, start with week one, uh, mean civil pressure anomaly. This is going to take us from the uh, 26th of April to the 3rd of May. The uh, coming week, we'll have an area of above average height. Uh, high pressure in the North Atlantic extending up towards Greenland. Low pressure will be across northern and west parts of Europe. That will pull the wind into uh, the northeast across much of northern uh, Europe. So it looks rather unsettled and rather cool, or even quite cold actually, uh, through many parts of Europe. There is a ridge here in the far southeast of uh, Europe. That will bring much warmer air up from the south. We'll see much warmer air pushing up from Africa. But most other places looking pretty cool actually in uh, the week ahead. It's taking us as say for the 26th of April to the 3rd of May, so the week that we are currently in. This would be week one, 500 millibar height anomaly with again an area of above average heights from the Atlantic going up towards Greenland. Uh, low pressure will be, or a trough below average heights, which is low pressure, will be across uh, many northern, central, and western parts of Europe. We've got this ridge over in the far east and south east Europe. That'll bring wind up from the south and far south east Europe, but pull down cold and northerly winds into the north and the west of Europe. Temperature anomalies uh, for week one are going to be colder than average. So from Ireland, UK, uh, Portugal, Spain in the far west of Europe, all the way over to west of Russia in the east, below average temperatures uh, coming up. Most parts of the Mediterranean, and certainly the western part of the Med, looking rather cool. From Italy eastwards, it does get warmer though, uh, with that ridge in that southeastern part of Europe. So above average temperatures, hotter than average temperatures through uh, like southern Italy, Greece, Turkey, and extending up into some parts of the Balkans as well. So the warm and average temperatures are very much restricted to this far eastern, southeastern part of Europe, from like southern Italy over towards the southern shores of the Black Sea. But most other places are looking uh, chilly, particularly so for Scandinavia and northern parts of Europe, where that temperature level is well below average. Uh, precipitation anomalies for week one from the 26th of April to 3rd of May are going to be drier than average in the far west and uh, northwest. So Scandinavia, Ireland, UK, much of northern France, northern Germany, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands can be out cold and average there. Spain and Portugal are going to be out drier than average, I should say there. Spain and Portugal are wetter than average. Uh, they have a swathe of like near normal uh, precipitation through the central parts of Europe where it goes uh, wet and average again in the far east and north. Northeast of Europe, this southeastern corner, of course, where we've got those hotter temperatures. Uh, there, we also have uh, drier than average conditions as well. Right, so that's week one done. Let's have a look at week two. This will take us from the third through to the tenth of May. The coming week, we'll see low pressure coming in off the Atlantic into northern and western Europe. There'll be high pressure down towards the Mediterranean and northern parts of Africa. The blocking over green looks like it's weakening. So it is still there to some degree, but it looks like it's blocking to some degree. So this just looks a rather unsettled week for much of northern and western uh, Europe, really, from the 3rd through to the 10th of May. Week 2 looks rather unsettled with low pressure in off the Atlantic into the northwest of Europe. But at the same time, high pressure is building from North Africa in towards uh, Mediterranean. That could start to turn things uh, drier and probably hotter through the central and western part of the Med. The week two 500 millibar height anomaly looks like this. So again, it gives the idea that it's very unsettled in the North Atlantic and into Northern Europe. Higher pressure above average heights down across Southern Europe and towards uh, Greenland as well. The jet stream is doing something uh, a little bit like that. So, so for northern, west, and central Europe, it looks unsettled. Southern Europe looks like it's coming under the influence, though, of higher pressure. 
The uh, week two temperature anomaly is again cooler or colder than average across northern central western Europe. So again, below average temperatures from Scandinavia and the UK and the far west over towards uh, uh, western Russia in the east. All points in between looking cooler than average as well. Spain, Portugal down to North Africa. It's more than average uh, through there. And it's more than average still in the southeast corner, especially Greece into Turkey. Hotter than average conditions there up towards uh, the Black Sea. Italy, unlike the Asiatic, central bowl of the med maybe a little bit cooler uh, through there a bit of a surprise given high pressures building up uh from the south but it can take a while to start to bring that heat northwards out of africa but many central northern western parts of europe are looking uh, particularly cool again in uh week two uh week two precipitation anomalies from the third to the tenth of may are looking uh wetter than average across the northern and western parts of europe so from ireland the uk and the west all the way over to the west of russia in the east or the northwest of Russia, we have above average precipitation. Southern Europe is driving average from Spain and Portugal in the west over towards Italy. We have driving average conditions from here. And this far southeastern corner is still driving average once again. Then there's a swathe of near normal precipitation through the central parts of France um, over towards Ukraine, uh, for example, driving average uh, through there. But definitely very unsettled in the north and west of Europe with uh, lots of low pressure in from off the Atlantic, being plenty of wet weather. Right, week three will take us from the 10th through to the 17th of May. Uh, mean silver pressure anomaly uh, starts to show higher pressure beginning to develop across the west and the southwest of Europe. The low pressure uh, is being pushed northwards along with the jet stream. Uh, as well. So today it looks like we have a finally have like uh, a slightly stronger signal as we go through May. You'll know that over the past couple of weeks the model has really been struggling uh, with the setup for May. But it looks like we've got a uh, side now of higher pressure beginning to develop in the west and the southwest Europe starting with the jet stream and the areas of low pressure uh, northwards. The 500 millibar height anomaly shows this too, although it does still show quite an influence through low, low pressure across northern Europe actually. Higher pressure down towards Spain and Portugal. So that actually looks a little bit more unsettled, perhaps, for northern and northwestern parts of Europe still. The uh, week three precipitation anomaly still looks rather, temperature anomaly, I should say, still looks rather cool in the far north and northwest Europe, from Ireland, UK, towards Scandinavia, parts of Germany, low countries, still below average there. Well, warm and average conditions in the far southwest and also in the far southeast Europe. Otherwise, getting to lose signal. Uh, so, so lots of places, particularly Eastern Europe, uh, having no signal or average uh, precipitation. And the uh, week three, uh, uh, temperature should say, and week three precipitation anomaly looks like that. So uh, rather drier than average in much of Southern Europe, a little bit wetter than average though in the far north and northwest. Otherwise, the signals are weakening. Right, head through to week four, which is the 17th, 24th of May. Still looking very similar. Uh, really, so again, trough of low pressure in over Scandinavia, higher pressure through France and southern southwestern parts of Europe. Again, the jet stream is pushed uh, northwards, so a lot of dry weather across southern and southwestern Europe. Most unsettled conditions across northern Europe. Week four, 500 millibar height anomaly, uh, looking like that. So trough of low pressure in over Scandinavia, ridge down towards Spain and Portugal. Jet stream probably coming in on a slightly northwest southeast uh, alignment into uh, western parts of Europe. Week four temperature anomaly still looks rather below average across the far north and northwest of Europe. Warm and average through Spain and Portugal, warm and average through southeast parts of Europe. Again, otherwise, uh, no signal really through most parts of Europe. And the week four, uh, week four precipitation anomaly from the 17th, 24th of May. Weakening signal, southern Europe again, looking rather drier than average. Northern Europe looks a little bit on the wet and average side, otherwise very weak signals. I'll just extend you out for weeks five and six. So this is week five, uh, mean silver pressure. And normally quite weak signals by now, but some higher pressure around France into Bay of Biscay could bring something a little bit drier to uh, western parts of Europe at the end of May, maybe a little bit warmer as well. Although the 500 bill of our height anomaly doesn't show much going on. The temperature anomaly for week five, again, still rather cool in the far northwest Europe, Scandinavia, Ireland, UK, still starting to lift up those temperatures. What won't there is mainly down across southern, southwestern Europe and the week five uh, precipitation anomaly. It does look a little bit drier though for western parts of Europe. And then week six will take us from the 31st of May to the 7th of June. 
Um, so I've got some higher pressure here across central western parts of Europe, maybe. So, so as we go further on, further into May, into so June, we could be seeing signs for some higher pressure. We've got some above average heights down towards Spain and Portugal there for week six in the first week of June. Um, I mean, something to get excited about, but just a few hints here that we might be starting to see some higher pressure later on into May. The uh, week six uh, temperature anomaly again looks uh, looks drier than average uh, and wetter. Um, looks warmer than average in western parts of Europe, near normal across uh, northern parts of Europe. Uh, quite weak uh, for temperatures really uh, with signals. And finally, the precipitation anomaly for week six from the 31st May to the 7th of June. Looks a little bit driving average in the far west, southwest, otherwise, uh, not much of a signal. So, slightly stronger signals uh, for May, for the first half of May anyway, looks like it's going to be cool and unsettled really through many parts of Europe um, in the next couple of weeks. As we go through into the second half of May and into the beginning of June, we might have a signal here for a little bit more higher pressure to build up from the southwest, possibly turning things a little bit drier and warmer across western parts of Europe. Although the signals are weak on that, so I won't go overboard. Um, just perhaps a little bit of an indication today of something slightly drier and warmer beginning to get going uh, in the second half of May and running into the beginning of June. But I think we need another week or two to, to wait and see about that. Uh, right, so that's it for that one. We'll be back later on with your, uh, with your uh, 10 to 14 day, including all the red features. So come back to that later. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.